This video is a demonstration of basic shell and networking capabilities provided by Linux running on the MicroSemi Smart Fusion microcontroller. This demo runs on the MCraft A2F LNX EVB board included in the Linux Smart Fusion Evaluation Kit. First of all, let's see how to set up the board. The board gets its power from the USB port, so all you need to do to get it powered is plug in the USB cable into a free USB port on your laptop or PC. From the PC, the USB connection is visible as a serial interface, which gives you easy access to the serial console of the board. The only other connection you need to make to set up the board is to plug it into your LAN using the standard Ethernet cable. In this demo, I have the board programmed with Linux configuration that is designed to showcase some of the basic networking capabilities of Smart Fusion. Here is a real-time view of the bootstrap sequence, as shown in the board serial console. This configuration takes several seconds to bring up the Linux kernel with TCPIP enabled and then come up to a shell prompt. Let's scroll back a bit and take a closer look at the bootstrap sequence. The board has uBoot firmware pre-programmed into the ENVM of the Smart Fusion and a Linux image pre-programmed into the external NOR flash memory available on the board. U-Boot runs from the ENVM and uses the embedded SRAM of the Smart Fusion as storage for volatile data. Having completed the basic initialization, U-Boot configures the memory controller to allow access to the external SRAM and flash memories and then copies the Linux image from the flash to the RAM and jumps to the Linux kernel entry point. It is possible to interrupt the auto-boot sequence by hitting a key before U-Boot starts relocating the Linux image to the SRAM and thus enter the command line interface of U-Boot. However, assuming no operator intervention, U-Boot proceeds to boot Linux up as soon as possible. As the Linux kernel proceeds to bootstrap, one of the initialization steps it performs is initialization of the Ethernet driver and the Smart Fusion Mac interface. The MAC address is passed to the kernel by U-Boot in the command string. In case U-Boot is configured to pass no MAC address to the kernel, the Ethernet driver assigns a random MAC address to the Ethernet interface. This may be convenient during development, but in a deployed configuration, you will want to have U-Boot retrieve a dedicated MAC address from the U-Boot environment and pass it to the kernel, just as is done in this demo. The Linux TCP IP stack is configured to assign a predefined IP address to the MAC interface. However, it can, of course, be reconfigured to obtain an IP address from DHCP server on the host. If you have a pool of targets running on the same LAN, DHCP is a convenient way to assign IP addresses to each machine in the pool without worrying what their IP address may overlap. We are now at the Linux shell and ready to run some Linux commands. In this configuration, I have the BusyBox multi-call utility configured with emphasis on providing various networking-related capabilities. As you can see, a single BusyBox binary provides a bunch of various Unix utilities, including init, the shell, networking-related tools, and even the VI editor. Let's run ifconfig on e0 to make sure that the Ethernet port is configured the way we want it to be. You can see that this link is indeed up and running and that correct MAC and IP addresses have been assigned to the interface. Let's try pinging a host in the local LAN. All is fine as you can see and we are able to reach the host. Now let's try pinging Smart Fusion from the host in the local LAN. As you can see, the connection is established. Now from Smart Fusion, let's configure a default gateway and the name resolver. Note how this sample configuration below makes use of the public name server provided by Google. Note also the use of VI to edit the file in the local file system. At this point, we are all set to access the Internet. Let's, for instance, sync our date and time with the time provided by a public time server. In another example, let's use wget to download a file from a remote server.
Let's now connect to a development host using Telnet Client. We can now set up a Telnet daemon on SmartFusion and allow remote Telnet sessions to connect to our target. As a next step, let's test secure connections to the target. On SmartFusion, I'm going to start the SSH daemon, which allows me to connect to the target remotely over secure links. An SSH session takes a bit of time to start up since this is when the SSH daemon performs extensive security key calculations. However, once the initial session has been established, the connection runs at normal speed. Now let's mount a directory exported by a development host over NFS. NFS is a very powerful concept since it allows making host files and directories immediately visible on the target. Given this capability, we are able to develop our code on the host and immediately test it on the target without the need of reflashing or even rebooting Linux on SmartFusion. Let's go ahead and create a simple Hello World application. On the host, I run an editor to edit the code. Now I'm going to run the cross compiler and build that application for Smart Fusion. Next, I go to SmartFusion and try running the image I have just built over the NFS mounted partition. As you can see, this first version works just fine, and now I can iterate as many times as I need to enhance my application further. This setup provides for a very convenient development environment and really makes and saves a lot of time in not having to reflash the SmartFusion over JTAG anytime you make a change to your code. As a next test, let's start the web server. Let's try connecting to the web page provided by the demo. Here, SmartFusion updates the pages that are shown at runtime, which allows us to show up-to-date target data. Specifically, here we get the current target date and time, and also a real-time view of target running processes. Also, we get a bit of animated picture in the upper left corner of the page where the penguin tries to fly. This demo has shown just a few basic networking capabilities that you can get with Linux on SmartFusion. Linux has a very advanced TCP IP stack with support for all kinds of network protocols and so much more as possible. Whatever networking feature you may need in your application, it is a good bet that it can be readily available in Linux.